Right, hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today we're going to take a look at the different techniques uh, for defensive ends or edge players uh, and you can in, sometimes inside backers too uh, when we are talking about boxing, spilling, and then denting which might be um, maybe a newer term. I don't know uh, how long it's been around but um, we're going to take a look at the difference excuse me, between boxing, spilling, denting and why each defense would choose to do so. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Game Strat, Sideline Replay System we use all right, Baker Sporting Goods, which provides us our uniforms, our spirit packs, uh, coaches' gear, and then any fan team stores or fan stores we do through Baker Sports. Dome, which is the headwear company uh, for Play Fest Football and the school that I'm currently at, so uh, we make all of our hats or get all of our hats through Dome. We we design them, get them, we customize our own hats. We build them the way we want them, different uh, types and and styles of hats, and then the designs and logos and any embroidery or anything else completely customizable. So check out Dome. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. We have three in our weight room that we use in the offseason to work on striking, elbows in, thumbs up, thousands of reps, don't need a partner. Just Play Football, which is the playbook software we use uh, here at the school that I'm at with meetings with our kids and our installs and uh, playbook stuff. I use it on my Patreon site, webinars. If I speak at clinics, I always use Just Play. I think it's the best play drawing tool on the market. High and tight, which is a ball security training aid. Teaches kids to probably hold the ball, proper position, proper points of pressure. Instant auditory feedback, if you're holding the ball correctly, you will hear a beep. If you do not hold the ball correctly, you do not hear a beep, so it gives them that instant auditory feedback. TV publishing, books, videos, helping grow the game, helping educate coaches, advance their knowledge in the game of football. They've got uh, a lot of really good videos that they've just put out in the last uh, month or two, so make sure you check out TV publishing. And then Coach Tools, which is a player evaluation tool, uh, which is now like a player grading system tool. If you're tired of doing it or frustrated by doing it the old-fashioned way, uh, grading it by hand on paper. This is a software that's designed to take it to the next level, make it more user-friendly, technology-based. So we're going to try and use it with our spring game coming up next week. We're going to uh, try and take a look at it to evaluate uh, and grade our players in our spring game next week. All right, so when you think about the term box, spill, dent, all right, a lot of times talking defensive ends, and I'm going to talk particularly today mostly about defensive end play or outside linebacker play in the old maybe 3-4 uh, or 5-2 defense. All right, but when you think about boxing, all right, boxing equals keeping the ball inside. All right, so when you box, you are going to try and send the ball back inside. So it's a defensive end versus some type of via release inside block. All right, if you've got a gap scheme or some type of puller coming back, you would box the puller, which means, all right, you would turn the football back inside. You're essentially acting almost as a force player, making the ball go back inside. All right, now, when you box, the technique should be a hard joint technique so that when you get the inside release, you're not just running straight up the field and making the ball go inside. You're still squeezing some air out, but the first block that comes back to you, you will take on with your outside arm and leg free. All right, so if my right side, my right arm was outside, I would take that block on with my left shoulder, all right, and I would still squeeze air, and when the trap or the fullback block or the lead block comes, I would take it on in a position where it's hard jointed, outside arm and leg is free, but I'm still trying to constrict, all right, the running lanes. I'm still trying to squeeze the ball back to the inside without making, all right, huge natural inside running lanes. So if, if, if this defensive end on this side, if, if he was a box player, all right, rather than just run up the field wide, yes, the ball will go inside of you, but you won't constrict the running lane, so you may not help the people on the inside of the defense if the ball goes inside but then can bounce back out extremely quickly, right? So the technique would be more hard joint where versus the inside veer blocks, inside veer releases of the tackle, okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to take air out of that block, so you're going to squeeze and take air out of that block, but the next block you take on, okay, you will take on, and, and I like to use the term hard joint, all right, and then we talk outside arm and leg free. So if we were playing with box players, we still want to squeeze air out of inside veer releases, all right, we still want to constrict running lanes, but when we take that block on, hard joint, take it on with your inside shoulder, all right, and make sure that your outside arm and leg stay free so that you can send the ball inside. All right, why do we do that? We want to set an edge on runs. We don't want the ball out wide, okay? Maybe if we're playing a 4-3 scheme, we have three linebackers in the box and we want to turn the ball back to them. So maybe I would play, 
My, you know, even in the four three look, maybe my Sam and my Will would be lever players where they're going to send the ball back to the Mike, and the Mike would spill the ball out to the Sam and the Will. And then if it was a quarters concept, my third level players would fix the fits or fix any of the issues as they come down into the run. All right, old school five two defenses or even five three defenses. If you didn't have players to send the ball to, you may have want to box it back inside where all your players are. Sometimes teams, when they man pressure, they'll box their man pressures because if the ball gets to the edge, all right, they don't want to rely on not having a free hitter out there, so they want to keep the ball all right, in, into the teeth of the blitz or where the man players are without it ripping on the edge, right? So a lot of different reasons why people box. Back in the old days, if they were like a 5-2 team that played with a rover or somebody that rotated strong, a lot of old school 5-2 defenses or even 3-4 defenses back in the day were playing with more defensive ends and it was really five-man zone pressures before zone pressures were a thing. And they had one, usually the weak side flat was voided out because forward passes weren't really that big of a thing either. So they would void the weak side flat out and they'd rotate the rover strong. Well, that weak side, if that ball got spilled and there's not a defender out there, to send it to, you don't want to do that. So a lot of those teams might have been box teams, right? So box teams are going to keep the ball inside, all right? They're going to make sure that they hard joint, take on their outside arm and leg free, okay? The issue with boxing runs is you're creating vertical entry. So then, you know, the next deal came about, which was spilling, okay? So spilling means you're going to send the ball outside. Spilling means you are going to wrong shoulder, All right, so spilling means that you are going to wrong shoulder, all right, and eh, let's just call this guy a whip or whatever. For me, make it easy. Let's just say left safety, right safety with a nickel or a strong safety down. So the term spill means wrong shoulder now, right? So instead of outside arm and leg free, wrong shoulder means take on those blocks. So if you got an inside veer release, if you got any type of inside gear release from the tackle, the next block that comes from the fullback or the guard, we will squeeze, take the air out, and now we will wrong shoulder, which means we're going to try and make the ball go wide, all right, and we're going to send the ball where we want to send the ball to where we think we can get free hitters, but also where we can tell our backers and our, that's where the ball is going to be sent. So on these versus these schemes and these blocks, we can all get to where we want the ball to send, right? We want to send the ball to a certain place on defense. We don't want to guess where it's going to go. We want to send it, and then we want to run and set up the support to where we are sending it, right? So squeeze the air. Now wrong shoulder, which means the ball will get outside because if this was my outside arm and leg, all right, when I boxed, I took, all right, I hard joined and I took blocks on with my inside shoulder, okay, and, and, and my inside leg firm, my outside arm and leg were free. Well, when I spill, now I'm physically going to take that next block on with my outside arm. So now what you call wrong arm, which means taking your outside arm and taking the block on there, which means you are getting pinned. You are getting sealed inside. You are getting blocked inside. And you're doing that because you want to send the ball to your support system, all right, to somebody that you think can be a free hitter, and then you're going to create gap exchanges. So now with a... With a Spill scheme, now when the end spills, you're probably going to take your linebacker and gap exchange and run over the top and try and get two for one on the puller, all right, or two for two puller ball carrier, two defensive bodies, so one to take the puller, one to take the ball carrier, right? You're trying to outnumber the offensive blockers, okay? So it's a wrong shoulder technique. It usually involves squeezing the air out of blocks, and then the next block that comes, you are probably physically going to turn Take it on with your outside arm and leg, and then try and be as physical as you can and pry back up the field vertically. So once you get, if you had that block coming from the fullback, all right, once you spill it with your outside arm and leg, wrong shoulder, now you want to pry back up the field and not continue to run down inside and get washed so far inside that, again, you're creating these massive running lanes, right? So we want to make sure the ball goes outside, so we've got to spill it and wrong arm it. Okay, but then once we spill it in wrong arm, we want to kind of pry and work vertical back up the field into the block, all right, so that we can force the path of the ball carrier to dramatically change, okay? So spilling the ball would be sending it 
outside as opposed to keeping it inside. Boxing would be keeping the ball inside with a hard joint technique, my outside arm and leg is free. Spilling the ball would be taking on blocks with my outside arm all right, and, and my outside leg to where the ball is now going to go outside, I'm sending it outside. Okay, so the good thing about that was we were trying to deny vertical entry, right? We're trying to deny the ball running north and south. The longer it goes east and west, it's not gaining yards yet. In order to do that, we had to set up some type of support structure where we know we're sending the ball to somebody that is down, right? We're sending the ball to somebody that is there. You can't spill the ball to nobody. So again, sometimes in man schemes, you may not want to spill, all right? If you think about like the old... 46 structure. So like if you think about the old 46 bear defense, and let's say, you know, we've got the nose here, and then we've got a three tech here, and we've got a three tech there, and we've got a player vice there, and we've got a player outside, a player outside. All right, and let's just say for argument's sake, we got two backers inside, and we're one high playing some type of one high defense. Well, now to the weak side over here, where we're coming off the edge of the weak side. All right. If we get the ball spilled and the will is the only player there and they have another puller, so let's say you're getting some type of GT counter or something to where you know you get down blocks, let's just say, or even if it's power. All right, so for argument's sake, if you get this here, all right, and they work it back, and you got this kick out block here, and you get a guard to pull. If we get the ball spilled and the puller gets out to the will, now they've got a puller on the will, not really the greatest situation for us. Right? So in that structure of defense, you may want to think about boxing and hard joining to where now off of that block we're a hard joint, but we're going to box and keep it back inside, all right? And now we're going to have the will try and box and, and have the will lever the ball back to the mic, okay, and work the ball that way because the structure of the defense, all right, is, is meant to keep the ball going back inside because if we spill it, and they get a puller or somebody else out there, now they're going to outnumber us if we're running the alley. All right, now if you're counting on this guy to be the extra player running the alley and be a deep defender in the middle of the field, all right, tough to do sometimes. If you're playing a man scheme where he's free, you may be able to get away with that because play action pass or other deals, hopefully you're still playing man to man. But if he was a typical deep third player, it'd be tough to get him to aggressively run the alley, play action pass, post other routes down the field, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. So that type of structure, you may want to use the box technique, all right? Whereas when teams started playing more of the 4 2 five structures, it became more spill theories, all right? So it became more spill theories and trying to get extra bodies, all right? So it became, if I know I'm bringing that safety down, now it became spill, hard, gap exchange, now I've got two on one on the puller, two for two if you include the puller and the running back. All right, so spilling became take away, deny vertical entry, send the ball to the perimeter. We know where our free hitters are. Now we've got to support the perimeter, but we know where we're trying to send the runs. Right? Well, two things about, in my opinion, all right, and, and it all depends on the Jimmys and Joes, the types of players you got, but boxing and spilling to me equates to a one-for-one one deal. And what I mean by that is we are essentially taking one of our defensive players and almost eliminating them from the scheme because we're eating up a block a certain way. So when you spill that defensive end when he does it correctly, all right, now if he's a real good player and a dude, eventually he'll figure some things out. But originally the spill theory is I eat up that first block, I make the ball go wide, I've done my job. I don't ever have to make a tackle. I don't ever have to make a play. All right, well, A, it's tough to get ends to do that time and time again in the day and age we live in because you've really got to promote uh, team atmosphere and winning games and doing your job because the spill player doesn't make a lot of tackles. And now that we have individual highlights and cut-ups and things that we're making at the click of a button with all of our online editing and video stuff, kids want highlights, right? They don't think spilling is a highlight. College coaches will appreciate a kid that spills. They'll know who actually made the play when they see something get train wrecked in there and the ball has to bounce wide to an unblocked player, they'll figure out that that kid's good because he can block wreck and he can spill and he can do all the things that he needs to do, right? But the kids don't understand that because it's not a highlight. So by one for one, a lot of times in high school, a lot of people felt like just through block wreck alone, if I have a tough physical kid, even if he's 190 pounds, if he gets an inside veer release, 
I can teach that kid to turn and wrong arm the next block coming and make the ball go wide. All right, so a lot of times it was a theory that you could use with smaller players or players that weren't as talented. But to me, boxing and spilling becomes kind of that one-for-one -one theory where my job is to eat that block up and make sure that the ball doesn't go, all right, if I'm boxing, it doesn't go outside. If I'm spilling, it doesn't go inside. Now, when you do that, a lot of times it's hat for hat. It's one for one. You've taken that guy out of the equation. All right, so that guy, you know, he may be playing his role on defense and doing his job, but he's not making any plays. All right, now, the really good hard joint outside backers, defensive ends, guys that can take on and hard joint a block and destroy it, all right, and then get rid of a blocker and make a play, that's a little bit different. Whereas, you know, the dent world now, the dent world gets into a scenario where you're allowing that defensive end to take blocks on thick head up. All right, so the veer schemes now, the inside release schemes with pullers. You're now telling that defensive end that he can take this next block on thick. All right, and he can hat and hands that next block. You may want to favor winning inside, so he's going to take it on thick, but then he's going to get his helmet inside. All right, but the bottom line is you are trying to create a scenario where you are taking that block on thick. And two reasons that you would do that. One, your defensive end is one of the best players on your team, and if he is one of the best players on your team, then you want him to make plays. Don't ask him to spill. Don't ask him to box because it's one for one, hat for hat. If you ask him to dent, now he can physically take that block on thick, all right, and get rid of that block and make a play, all right? The issue with denting is now you don't know if it's going to be vertical entry or outside entry because you're not really defining how he fits that block, all right? And if he fits it a different way, if one time he dents it thick and ducks inside, the ball goes outside, you got to run to him, all right? If the next time he takes it on thick and he puts his helmet outside and it goes vertical entry, well, now you got to hope that you're not running to it because now it's entering vertical. So the dent theory, all right, although it's better <coughs> to me athletically for a defensive end that's a playmaker to allow him to take blocks on and make plays than it is to just eat up blocks and say, hey, you spill, you box. The problem is for the rest of the defense behind it, you've got to be fixing things on the fly all the time because the fits are not predefined. If he dents it and wins inside, the ball goes outside, we got to run. If he dents it and his helmet's outside and it enters vertical, we've got to plug downhill, right? So you're not really predetermining where the ball is going to be sent. So now the defense is more of a moving parts, moving pictures, and your second and third level players have to fix that. Now, why do I, you know, like the dent scheme in today's game a little bit more than I have in the past? Because now we're starting to get, especially in the spread stuff, we're starting to get a lot of bluff schemes and a lot of deals where a guy's coming back, all right, and we're getting a Y off or whatever, and this guy's coming back, and he sets up versus the spill teams, inside veer release, here comes that block coming back, I've got to turn my shoulders and make sure I spill that block, okay? So I turn to make sure I spill it. Well, now what offenses are doing is they're inviting the spill, bringing the puller back, and now when he goes to spill, they bluff it, and they get another blocker to the perimeter to block the overhang or, I'm sorry, the, the gap exchange player or whoever it may be, all right? And now they're getting a body on a body in the read game, all right? Sometimes they're bluffing them and they're bringing this guy out to the flat because let's say if they had, you know, potentially two blockers out here and let's say if the defense was some type of scenario where it's corner safety, free safety there, if they can block this here and they can block that there, and now they can bluff this and get this guy out to the edge. Now they can throw the ball away from the scrape exchange player to where this guy, all right, hopefully can't run all the way through the flat and make a play. They can block, all right, the player that's supposed to take three to the flat. They can block the corner, and now they can make the free safety out of get down and make tackles. And they can run inside of a read theory to where if it's not spilled or if it's not, all right, bluffed, and the end is an up the field player. Well, now if the end's up the field and this route can't release, now we can get the ball back inside to where we have numbers in a blocking scheme. Okay, so when you're starting to see a lot of those bluff theories or those fullback flat theories, those sneak theories in the read game, those are all things that are, you know, essentially built for the spill teams. They know you're going to spill, they know you're going to chase, so they give you all the, the action that you want, and when you go to spill chase, they bluff you and they go to the next level with a blocker. 
quarterback run game, however it may be, right? So now that we're starting to see more of those schemes, I like the dead theory to where when that guy comes on, instead of trying to disappear inside and getting bluffed, I'm going to take him on right to his face mask and try and dent it so he's never going to be an extra blocker to the perimeter and he's never going to get through to the flat because I'm going to take that on face to face, hat in hands, as thick as I can, and I'm going to make sure that he can't bluff me. All right, so the dent theory to me, all right, allows your players to make some plays. Yes, you probably have to be a better football player. Yes, you probably have to be stronger. Yes, you have to be more physical, okay? But in theory, it's not a hat for a hat anymore. And with the, with the spill stuff, it's not inviting guys to down block or veer release, chase inside gap exchange, everybody run to the ball, ball gets sent outside. Well, now they're eating that up with some of their theories and they're saying, all right, look, if that's what you're gonna do, we're gonna let that guy spill. And when he spills, we're not gonna block him. And now we're gonna bring a bluff player or a flat route or whatever it may be. And we're gonna get extra bodies to the point of attack because we know this guy spills so hard. We know that if we just give him the response of a veer release, we know what he's going to do, and when he does that, we just use other tools in our toolbox to get the ball outside of him. So the dent theory to me in today's game with, with the bluff stuff and the Y off stuff, I think the dent theory is something that you need to investigate. Obviously, it takes a little bit better football players. Do you have those in your high school football program? I don't know. The spill theory has been very good to a lot of people uh, for the last, I don't know, especially in spread football too, and, and now that defenses are getting a little bit uh, spread out on, on the back end and in the box. Uh, the spill theory and sending the ball out to where your people are has been a good theory for the last probably 20, 30 years. Uh, way back when, and, and when football first started, it was probably more box. So, you know, football is cyclical. It all comes and goes, and it goes in circles. The offense does things. The defense catches up. The offense changes. The defense catches up. All right, so the game's, you know, a constant state of flux. That's what makes it so beautiful. And there's always new and, and, and evolving things. And then there's always things that go back to things that used to be done 40, 50 years ago. So there's plenty of teams that are great box defenses. There's plenty of teams that are great spill defenses. There's plenty of teams that are playing great, all right, dent defense with their, with their players. So there is no right or wrong way, all right? There is no, all right, only way. It's what's best for you, what's best for your kids, and what you want to teach. And then the bottom line is the rest of your fits need to be set up off of that technique. If you're spilling, your fits need to be set up that way. If you're boxing, your fits need to be set up that way. If you're denting, now I think you've, excuse me, got to be able to fit things on the fly both ways, all right, which makes it a little bit more difficult because if you dent and you do get vertical entry, you got to be able to play it. If you dent but it does become helmet inside and the ball spills, you got to be able to run to it. So the dent theory probably takes a little bit more work. It's probably a little bit more on the fly type deal that you got to fix things on the fly, whereas spill is, hey, the ball's there, let's go. All right, boxes, hey, the ball's here, let's go. Spill denies vertical entry, box denies the ball on the perimeter. All right, so you just got to pick and choose how you want to win. All right, you got to pick and choose what battle you want to fight and do what's best for your kids. All right, so remember, uh, turn your notifications on. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the content or don't like the content. Always leave a comment. Every comment I see on my end, if I can see it, I will try to respond to it. Uh, because that interaction is what makes the channel great. If you're in spring football, again, stay healthy, good luck. We've got our game next week, so hopefully we can finish up our last couple practices strong and put a good outing out on the field. If you're getting ready for fall football and summer conditioning and weightlifting, hope everybody stays healthy. If you're teaching, finish the year strong. You're almost there, all right? Uh, make sure you put in some work these last couple weeks and, and get yourself some good rest and relaxation over the summer so we can juice it up, amp it up, be full go with a battery, all right, and be totally charged up when it comes to football in the fall. I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you guys next time.